In today's video, we're going to be talking about using reliable sources and the questions that you need to ask before you use a source from a website. So to start, let's ask a question. Have you ever stumbled into something on the internet that you immediately know that it's not true? I know that I definitely do on a daily basis, and I've noticed that in the last few years, it keeps getting worse and worse. There's more and more untrue, totally crazy information put on the internet that's there to trick us or to sell us something. And it's a skill that I think we really need to be able to pick out. Because I'm extremely old, I remember how there used to be magazines and newspapers sitting on the store shelves that just had the most ridiculous covers. And you can still find these sometimes today. They'll you know, say something ridiculous about Bigfoot being captured or the Mothman or even just some completely implausible thing about losing weight fast with no effort. These still exist, but it's changed a little bit. See, back then there'd be like a newsroom putting together these fake magazines or newspapers with just crazy stories. And everybody at some level kind of knew that these were fake and just for fun. Today though, literally one person can do exactly the same thing that giant teams of people did in the past. And they do so through the internet. You've probably ran into stories kind of like this on either the bottom or the sides of web pages that you've visited. Crazy claims like three simple tricks to look young or three signs of cancer that doctors usually miss. Things designed to get people to buy stuff or to make people worried and usually then buy stuff. Today we usually label these stories as clickbait. They're things designed to get you to click so that you'll click more things and more things and eventually just have your attention totally focused on these stories that are either completely untrue or designed to sell you things. And while these types of clickbait or fake stories are usually easy to spot, this isn't always the case. And perhaps even more unfortunately, this uncertainty has spilled into the places where we go to do research online. The places we go to get facts for things we have to do in school or things where we want to actually improve ourselves. Key point to take away from this video, you must consider where the information you get is coming from when you are trying to find factual information, which should be all the time. Unfortunately, the factual information is getting harder and harder to find. There's a whole lot of people today who will log into a computer or pull something up on their phone, have it pop up as the first thing that shows up in their Facebook feed or at the top of Google and decide, okay, this sounds legit, I believe it. Please do not be one of those people. Before you take anything as fact, try to look into it a little bit deeper. So getting strictly into our lesson here, the next time you are assigned a research paper on any topic, start by considering these questions. First question to consider, and probably the easiest to tell, ask yourself, is this person trying to sell me something? Let's start by saying, I'm researching the safety of self-driving autonomous vehicles. You've probably heard of these. There's big companies like Tesla that make these cars and trucks and they're starting to come into supply. They're usually still pretty expensive, but it's something that's becoming more and more common and lots of people are doing research into it for school and for their jobs. In the past, I've had a lot of students where the first thing they'll type in to Google is the name of whatever they're searching. So they type in Tesla and at the top of Google, you're going to get results for Tesla's website, the auto manufacturer. When you click that website, you're going to get a page as of the making of this video that looks like this. The problem we have is that this isn't really the information that we're looking for. In no less than three separate places on the screen that comes up on this website, they're asking you to buy their car. If you're looking around this website, you might find some information about the safety of these vehicles somewhere, but they're definitely not going to make it front and center. And they're definitely not going to make front and center any stories that are potentially negative. Keep in mind that when you're researching a company, a brand, a product, etc., that you may want to consider that they will not tell you about anything negative. They want to hide that stuff because that's going to hurt their sales. Second question you should ask yourself is, does it seem too good to be true? 
Let's say I'm researching safe strategies for getting fit and losing weight for a paper I've got to write in a health class. Well, if I'm not careful, when I put some sort of search like that into Google, I'm going to get ridiculous things. And here's some examples that came up immediately. How to lose weight without exercise, not clickbait. It's probably clickbait if it says it's not clickbait. How to eat more and lose weight. That sounds fantastic and probably isn't true. And how to lose 20 pounds of fat in 30 days without doing any exercise. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is and it's possibly even dangerous. Always ask yourself, does this seem unbelievable? Does this conflict with something I know to be true? And does this seem exaggerated? If something seems off, it probably is. The third question to ask yourself when doing any kind of research is, who made this website? To illustrate this point, I made a website using Google Sites, and I did this in about nine minutes. And you can tell right off by looking at this website that there's not a lot of information and something's off. You can also probably tell that because the website is called Clouds Are Just Swarms of Bees. The entire website is devoted to a ridiculous theory that I put together in no time about how clouds are giant swarms of bees. Yeah. My point in making this ridiculous website in like less than 10 minutes is that literally anybody can make a website and literally anybody can put whatever the heck they want to on it. It's kind of scary when you think about it. In 2020, children can make websites, like children younger than the students that are probably going to be watching this. I can imagine a third or fourth grader being given an assignment in class where they go and create a website and the teacher walks them through. There's probably not going to be a whole lot of great information on that website, but that's there forever. Other people that can make websites? Politicians. People who are trying to get you to come on their side of an issue. Now, this isn't always a bad thing, but it's important to take into account bias. The fact that everybody in some way or another is trying to get you on their side, to get you to believe something. Crazy people can also make websites. You've probably heard some ridiculous theories out there that people have put on the internet and suddenly had a huge following of people believe that it's true. Sometimes this is incredibly dangerous. It's often scary. Points being, try to find out who wrote the article, who made the website. Ask yourself what makes them an authority on the issue. And are they part of a reputable organization? Are these from people you've heard of before? If you ask a parent or a friend or a teacher or a librarian about, you know, this website, is this legit? Are they going to say, yeah, I just watched a news story about them the other day. They have great reviews and recommendations. Ask yourself, do they have educational credentials? As in, did they go to college for... I don't know, 12 years to be a doctor and get their doctorate and learn all of this stuff and practice medicine for 20 years. If so, they probably have the authority to write an article that has to do with something medical. Are they a professor at a college and they've studied something for years and years? If that's the case, then they're probably somebody that you can at least have a better chance of trusting. Next, the fourth thing you should probably ask yourself is, when was this article written? The thing about a lot of articles that you'll find online is that they were written a long time ago. And while certain people might have been an authority on an issue 20 years ago, things change quickly. Uh, don't always take something into account if it's been written far in the past. Usually the more current the information is, the better it is. And this is especially true with science. If you're trying to find statistics about anything that has to do with science, then you probably want to try to look up an article that's extremely recent. Make sure links within the articles that you're reading actually work. If a lot of them are dead or they go to some place that doesn't exist anymore, then that probably means that that article isn't as valuable. And try to make sure that any statistics or studies that you get that you're gonna use in a research paper are from the last five, six, seven years at most. The more recent, the better, and the more believable your research is gonna be. Fifth question to ask, can I verify this info by looking at other sources? This one's one of the tougher ones to do, but basically if you find a statistic or a fact, see if you can find it somewhere else that also seems legit. If you're finding a statistic that says that 1,500 people were injured using trampolines 
last year. That sounds like a lot. Maybe I want to look on other websites to make sure that that statistic is actually true. Now, this all comes down to trust. I'm not giving you all these questions and pointing out all of this like strange deception on the internet to try to scare you away from the internet. In fact, I think the internet's awesome. Without it, we would not have all this fantastic stuff that we use today. However, you have to go into the internet thinking about the concept of trust. What can I trust? What can I use? Who made this? Speaking of who made this, one thing that you can do right off the bat is check the URL, specifically the end of it. If it ends with .edu, it comes from an educational institution. You can still have biased opinions, but it's a good place to start. .gov is the same way. Governmental sites, you know, the parties in charge of the government change, so sometimes their agendas can change, but .gov is still usually a trustworthy place. .net or .org are usually from nonprofit networks or organizations. Now these are hit or miss. Usually they're either very, very poor or very, very good. Usually they are trying to get you on their side. They're going to be biased. If you're looking up a website that is trying to fight against the death penalty, they're probably not going to give you statistics from the other side. They're going to be very one-sided. And .com, the one we're most familiar with, could really be anything, ranging from the commercial, like the Tesla website we went to earlier, they're trying to sell you things, to people who make websites. These, of course, can be reliable. It just depends on the people or the group that are making the website or publishing the article. One good tip, if you're kind of lost, is to check with your library. See if they have a database. Like the school that we're at has a database you can go to. Um, it has links and places that are great to go to to find reliable research. For example, it has links to the Kentucky Virtual Library where you'll find a big database, various databases of information that are scholarly. That means they're made by people that are, you know, scholars. They have lots of experience. They've done research before. They work for colleges or institutions. It has things that are peer reviewed, meaning that lots and lots of people have looked at these and determined that they're authentic. It's got publications that you can generally trust. Our school also has access to the Encyclopedia Britannica Online, which is a trustworthy example. Also, feel free to talk to a librarian or a media specialist or a teacher and just ask their advice. Ask them if this website looks reputable or if this article would be good to use for your research paper. Consider using physical books. You're going to find a lot more trustworthy information in books. There's a lot less chance that crazy stuff is going to be published and sitting on a library shelf. Now you can also consider televised and print sources. So what I mean by that is that newspapers and news channels will have online publications. Anything that you can see on TV as far as news is going to have some kind of online presence that you can go to. Now, news places can be biased, especially in 2020, but that doesn't mean that they're totally useless. Check out links referenced in the news stories and explore what they have. That's often a good place to start. Many of my students mentioned that they've heard that Wikipedia is completely useless for any research. And I kind of disagree to some extent, and I'll explain why. Many of you know that Wikipedia is just like a giant source of information online with articles about basically anything. It's an encyclopedia like we talked about before. The difference with Wikipedia is that anybody can go on and basically contribute to an article. They can make alterations to it and things like that. It's not as easy as it sounds, but anybody can do it. One thing that most teachers fail to mention is that if you go to the bottom of a Wikipedia page, you'll actually find all the references that the people who made the article actually used for it. And these references are often a really good place to dig into and see how much of this information is true. I would argue that Wikipedia is a good place to start. It is true that Wikipedia can be edited by anyone, but almost all the false edits that happen there on major subjects get fixed really quickly. I consider it a good place to start learning about a subject, but do not, do not cite a Wikipedia page. Do not try to use Wikipedia in your research paper specifically. Feel free to read about a subject on Wikipedia, especially if you don't know anything about the subject. It can at least fill you in a little bit. Explore the sources at the end, then get your own understanding from other sources, other more reputable sources. 
Once again, don't cite Wikipedia. It's going to make teachers, professors, whoever mad. Don't try to take the lazy way out. So to wrap up our video today, I want you to pay attention to these. Consider everything you read. Always ask yourself questions about what you're consuming on the internet. Don't fall for the first website to pop up on Google. Use your library to help or ask someone who has more experience if you're a little confused about something. And this is all just the tip of the iceberg. Critical thinking and experience are going to help you the most to identify the real from the fake. Thanks for watching.